Welcome to The Exchange. I'm Guy Schoen, bringing you the biggest news and interviews from all around the business world. Coming up on the show, all systems go for space tourism. We blast off and take a look at what betting on the next frontier means for the future of travel. And is space junk the biggest threat to live long and prosper? We head to Italy to meet the company trying to clean up the galaxy. Space science has taken a giant leap in the past year. Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin and SpaceX all flew their first tourist-focused missions. Meanwhile, NASA successfully landed its rover on Mars and the James Webb Space Telescope, the world's most powerful of its kind, blasted off into orbit days shy of the new year. Well, more money than ever is being pumped into space technology, with Morgan Stanley forecasting the industry to top $1 trillion by 2030. Private investments in space companies topped $10 billion last year, the highest it's ever been. 2021 also saw a record 132 successful orbital launches, with China and Elon Musk's SpaceX landing a mix of private and government-funded missions. And while space tourism is set to skyrocket this year, there will also be renewed efforts to return to the moon and more missions to the red planet. Now, one company at the forefront of space exploration is Virgin Group. Its subsidiary Virgin Orbit was founded in 2017, but it's been part of a space program that began in the mid-1990s. Well, the president and CEO of Virgin Orbit, Dan Hart, joins us now from New York. Dan, welcome to the show. Now, Virgin Orbit isn't the only company offering space solutions, is it? So what puts your company ahead of its competitors? Well, you know, we brought a new technology. Um, last year was the first time a liquid rocket ever left an airplane and ended up putting satellites into orbit. The first time in history. It's been talked about for decades um, and tried a few times. Our rocket, for instance, has two engines on it, one for each rocket stage. Our competitors have five engines, 11 engines. Uh, that, that translates into enduring uh, disadvantages in, in cost and reliability. Um, and then there's the flexibility aspect that gives us reach into markets that others can't. I mean, we can take an airport anywhere in the world and uh, within a few weeks turn it into a spaceport. Dan, Virgin Orbit has started the year off with a bang, hasn't it? A listing on the NASDAQ, a rocket launch. So what's next? What does the next 12 months look like for Virgin Orbit? Well, so there's, there's a few different threads. Number one is, you know, we'll be picking up our launch rate. So you'll see us move forward with launch. You'll see us move forward with sat, uh, space solutions and, and partnering with our customers to helping them bring their capabilities to Earth. Um, and you'll see the, the company moving more and more into an operational space mode. Thank you, Dan. So watch this space. Virgin Orbit is buckling up for a busy year ahead with launches planned in the UK and Japan. Well, more space launches are set to come. But what about missions from the past? Well, since the 1950s, thousands of rockets have been sent to space, leaving behind many dead satellites and debris that are just floating about. NASA says around 23,000 pieces of debris larger than a softball are orbiting the Earth as we speak. And it all may seem harmless, but at speeds of up to 17,000 miles per hour, that could damage a satellite or spacecraft. But one company is on a mission to help clean up space. We sent Jack Parrick to take a look. Well, Guy, we know that space junk is already a big problem and it's a growing one. And while everyone knows why we should be doing something about this, the harder question to answer at the moment is how. And that's why I've come here to de-orbit in the town of Fino Mornasco, just north of Milan in Italy. The firm brands itself as a space logistics company, the equivalent, say, of a truck company here on Earth, each launch carrying multiple items with anyone able to pay to hitch a ride on their launches to get something into orbit. This is where it gets really interesting, though. When these cores, which will be the heart of D-Orbit's sixth and seventh launches, go up, once they release the cargo people have paid to be on them, they'll be part of a fleet searching out those decommissioned satellites to strip them of valuable materials, recycling them to repair or refuel other satellites. 
The company has received millions of dollars in investments. Their goal is to make sending things into space a commonplace activity, but ensuring that practice will be sustainable from the start. It's not just space tourism that's driving investment. Space infrastructure, which includes GPS, geospatial intelligence and communications, are major segments in the sector that's gaining attention. Chad Anderson joins us from New York. He's the CEO of Space Capital, a VC firm tracking more than 1,500 space tech companies with $200 billion in global equity. Thanks for joining us, Chad. Now, private flights to space have drawn some flack, haven't they, for raising carbon emissions in the atmosphere. Is there a case then to be made for space technology? Without a doubt. I mean, the one thing that I think gets lost in the noise is that we wouldn't even know about climate change if it weren't for space. To address challenges of this scale, we're going to need global solutions. And the only way to do that is with satellites. Thanks, Chad. So the space race isn't just about a fancy trip to the next frontier. It's also betting on technology that will equip people on Earth to better fight climate change. It's time for our regular feature, Business in 60 Seconds, Start the Clock. The European Central Bank announces its interest rate decision. The bank has started trimming its $2.2 trillion pandemic emergency bond buying program, but has also pledged to inject more stimulus to help stabilize the current nearly 5% inflation rate to the ECB's 2% target. Pfizer releases its fourth quarter and full year earnings. The pharmaceutical giant generated nearly $42 billion in revenue in 2020, boosted by sales of its COVID-19 vaccine. Analysts say that figure could top $100 billion this year as more countries roll out booster immunizations. Pfizer's antiviral pill is also set to be a big money maker. And Apple reports its fiscal first quarter earnings. The Silicon Valley giant recently became the first US company to reach $3 trillion in market value. Investors are betting the iPhone maker will continue to launch its best-selling products. Made it. Four seconds to go. So, the space race is heating up, and the focus for business is extending far beyond intergalactic tourism. Record investment promises to take the space economy to new heights over the next few years. And as investment in space tech shifts into areas like sustainability, perhaps those lessons being learnt from above can help protect our climate and save our way of life here on planet Earth. Well, that's all we have time for on this edition of the show. Thanks for watching. Please do check out euronews.com for all your latest business news. And join us again next time on The Exchange.